Grand Rising, my friends. Glad for you to join me today as we explore the mysteries of our world and universe. Let us first look at what's going on in the crypto markets. Bitcoin, you see, is having a rally above 40,000 today. You know, here crypto investors are seeing gains in Ether and Bitcoin on August 5th after the successful launch of Ethereum's London hard fork and a series of new Bitcoin exchange traded fund filings. Grayscale specifically, I know, has filed for and um, is hiring positions to run an ETF. But Grayscale, of course, famously runs their Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and various other coins trust, but they would love to have an ETF. Uh, this resulted in a rally that propelled Bitcoin price 9% higher and caused Ether to gain 11.75%, which pushed the altcoin closer to the elusive 3000 level. I think Ethereum maxed out at around 33, 3400 in his last push, but these numbers are small for where it'll be in the future. Recent comments from the United States Security and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler about the viability of a Bitcoin ETF were followed by several new ETF applications being filed on August 5th, and investors are hopeful that the chance of approval has increased. So that's some good news. We're going to keep an eye on that. And, you know, as soon as America, Canada already has several ETFs for uh, cryptocurrencies. But everyone is watching the American market because this is where the money is made. Let's not kid ourselves. Moving on, China is about six years ahead of United States in building blockchain payment system, CEO says. Who is this? Well, Dan Moorhead of Pantera Capital thinks the United States has fallen significantly behind China in the race to develop a blockchain based payment system. China, of course, famously now has the digital yuan um, here. The former CFTC chairman, Chris Giacarlo, wrote a great op ed in the journal in 2019, calling it America Sputnik moment when China announced their blockchain with the belief is that. The future will be decided by who has the best technology. And on this channel, we'll be discussing all of those technologies from artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, blockchain technology, electric vehicle, sustainable energies. These things are these things are be the things that will take us further and farther than we could ever imagined uh, before the recent crackdown on Bitcoin, which, you know, China always has a crackdown. Every, it seems, two to three months. China has already emphasized integrating blockchain technology into its financial systems. And, of course, that's all it is, is a way for them to um, try to maintain, let's just say, a firm watch on the dealings of the crypto um, <laughs> uh, universe. The city of Miami launches its own cryptocurrency, Miami Coin. Miami, Miami, of course, with their mayor, um, let's see if his name is in here, uh, Suarez, you know, he, he has been uh, actively courting the crypto market. Um, the crypto conference was there just early, I believe, in um, early June. Uh, he is looking for a way to find ways to integrate cryptocurrency into the workings of the city because you know hey give them credit not of greed or whatever you want to call it. it it's about it's going to make a lot of money for um the cities and the countries the municipalities that get on board sooner rather than later with the changes in the financial um markets and how that will uh play out in the future so they're coming out with a miami coin he's using it on the stacks protocol where you'll be able to um it's a, it sounds like a proof of stake blockchain where you'll be able to earn yield on. It's actually it's a may not be a proof of stake because it seems to be a protocol that goes on to the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. Give me a second. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Is it, is it powered by stacks of protocol that enables smart contracts on the Bitcoin network? So, 
you know, you're going to have people complain about the um, environmental footprint of proof of work versus proof of stake. But, you know, what's more, what's, I'm trying to say, say it correctly, what's more powerful than a Bitcoin network and cryptocurrency? Well, nothing. And so if you're going to build a protocol or something, might as well be on the best. Now, moving on across, around the world into kind of a different subject here, you see a lot of FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, and doubt about the future of where uh, autonomous driving is going to take us. Um, you know, I tell my friends, we have these discussions all the time about how the future is going to be. And, you know, one thing is certain, and it sounds... You know, when you explain to people and they think about it, 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 it still sounds like science fiction. But, you know, we are getting close to level five autonomy, you know, and, and, and if you don't understand what that means, we'll, I'll come back and discuss that at some point. But basically, you will be able to get into a vehicle that will take you to your destination without any input besides you telling it where to go from um, any other human involved. Um, if a human gets involved, then it's usually a problem. Um, see somebody walking in my backyard now, and I don't know who these people are exactly. And I'm, you know, maybe they lost their dog or something, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. But they're walking around. I, I have no clue. The uh, so in in where are we at? A Tesla driver in Norway decided to get behind the wheel of his Model S while intoxicated and visibly fell asleep during the drive while autopilot was activated. The driver assists system managed to safely bring the electric vehicle to a stop. The incident happened in Norway's eastern district. And pfft, if they have any Norwegian names on here, you're going to see me stumble a lot. <laughs> on Friday, July 30th, motorists passed a Model S, Tesla Model S on the road, realized the driver was seemingly unconscious at the wheel of the electric vehicle. They followed the driver and filmed him driving on the road with his head down for over a minute. Eventually, the Model S came to a stop by itself, and the motorist attempted to wake up the driver, who was seemingly unconscious. And that in and of itself is the nutshell of it. In America, there's around 30,000 um, motor vehicle deaths per year. And when we have the technology to almost completely erase that or even just say reduce it by 50%, it's, it's going to be hard pressed to argue against. Um, people get angry. What I tell them is there's going to be a point where you will have to have a special license to be able to drive your own vehicle. And it would be difficult to, to get that license because what do you do when the, the um, artificial intelligence is... Uh, three times better than a human, five times better than humans in getting us to our destination, reducing um, traffic. Hold on. Back with it. Speaking of which, the Pentagon is experimenting with using artificial intelligence to see days in advance. Now, part of what we also will be on this channel talking a lot about would be um, different investment opportunities such as equities, cryptocurrencies, of course, um, anything that came up, precious metals, you know, hey, we, we here trying to help people um, find a, a easier existence in life. So where you have a little bit less worry about your day to day. So a lot of the things we talk about is like, okay, well, well, who, who is investing in these technologies, in these um, opportunities that's going to that's going to that we're going to see uh, come come forth in the future, and a lot of them are like pff, public companies that are traded on the um, on the stock exchange on Nasdaq. So, you know. This day and age is no excuse. If you're educating yourself, you're watching videos like this, then I know you're thinking about what can you do. And, and the vast majority, and we'll talk about um, that in, during the course of this journey, we'll be on about positivity, about, you know, using your intention, your mental energy to build a better reality for yourself. So here, 
we see the United States Northern Command, NORTHCOM, recently conducting a series of tests known as Global Information Dominance Experiments, or GLIDE. I think that's how you say it. I would say GLIDE. Which combine global, global sensor networks, artificial intelligence systems, and cloud computing resources in an attempt to achieve information dominance in decision-making superiority. So for those of us who watched the movie Minority Report years ago, and it mentioning it down here a little bit later. This is kind of what they're trying to do. So basically in a nutshell is having enough information from social media posts, um, wiretaps from telephones, emails, human intelligence, signal intelligence from satellites and other means to be able to run this into one system, in that system, um, let me talk about this. Starlink is in here. In that system, uh, have artificial intelligence start to pick up the patterns in and be able to predict ahead. Kind of almost how you know you start typing in a Google some things and it predicts what you want next because it's been listening to you. Not officially. Uh, and, but imagine that on now a military grade uh, scale where it's trying to predict with nation states are doing days in advance. If not further in advance, let's let's be real with how it's going. Here they show a Starlink antenna deployed. So Starlink, for those who don't know, is a satellite constellation being built by SpaceX right now in low Earth orbit, which would decrease the latency, the time for the connection between your computer and the system, you know, the satellite system and to, to, to receive and send uh, information back and forth uh, to the web. United States military is very interested in this technology because right now uh, the Starlink satellites probably has about over about 1,500, maybe give or take um, a couple of hundred either direction satellites in low, low Earth orbit. But the plan is for them to have over 42,000 satellites. So this would, you know, saturate the planet with the ability to communicate in split seconds with laser because the, the satellites communicate amongst uh, between themselves with laser technology, with lasers, laser technology, with lasers to um, speedily speed uh, information packets around the world. So this experiment just talked about here, the, the experiment largely centered around contestant logistics and information advantage. In other words, how do we get our our troops and our equipment where we want to when other people don't want us to get them there and how do we control the information um, domain which could be satellites planes human intelligence uh, electromagnetic weaponry those things how do we control that in there the two cornerstones of the new war fighting paradigm recently proposed by the vice chairman of the joint chiefs of staff so Van Herc, who is the um, commander of uh, NORTHCOM, General uh, Glenn Van Herc, said that machine learning and artificial intelligence can detect changes and we can set parameters where it would trip an alert to give you an awareness to go take another sensor, such as a geo uh, inc, which is a geospatial intelligence on satellite capability to take a closer look, which may be going, what may be ongoing in a specific location. And so this way we're speeding up the process of understanding that things are occurring by the mag magnitude order of days to where we are able to now predict what our enemies will be doing in the future. And as you know, or if I, you know, you've ever heard me say yet, but you hear me say a million times in the future, if we're hearing about it, it has already been operational and all the bugs, most of the bugs, have been worked out. So that's the thing. Speaking of which, German warship heads to South China Sea amid, amid tensions, tension with Beijing. Now, why is this important? And whatever this was is gone now. But why is this important? Well, you know, if you are aware, and we'll talk on this a lot about the geopolitical events of the world and how that plays into things that will affect us on our day-to-day -day life. Um, you know, the world is splitting off into two camps in the kind of a Cold War. 
in those camps are United States, majority, of, you know, mainly Europe, the, uh, the Five Eyes, which is Canada, New Zealand, um, Australia, UK, but majority of Europe, a lot of also um, South America and India versus kind of a the the cold war against russia china and countries that are falling into their camp you know and, and africa is one of the battlefields um the middle east has now become a battlefield or has been it, pff, middle east has been a battlefield for millennia but um you know now that we're leaving afghanistan china's moving in you know russia has been in syria since we've been in syria uh, it's the same as is history doesn't, as they say, uh, what is it? Um, history may not repeat history. If it doesn't repeat it off in rhymes in the same way you saw us using Korea and Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, these countries as proxies during the fifties, sixties and seventies. Now you can kind of predict where you're going to see the proxy battles and wars of the future, be it Africa, um, the Middle East, furthermore, you know, as they start to split into, you know, the, the, the different camps, possibly even um, South America. You know, they'll saber rattle the, the big countries, but it would be so devastating between any any battle between them that I can't imagine that that, that would be a reality. But... Proxy battles, you know, cyber battles, space information, you know, these things are occurring now um, and they're only will continue into the future. So German Germany is showing their allegiance back to America by, you know, now selling ships over there to the South China Sea. And if you don't know and, you know, I don't have a map here and could bring one up, but. China has tried to expand the territory's claims is under its control. Um, and, you know, hey, look, maybe it is theirs. They, you know, the, the information I receive could be propaganda as well. I, you know, I try to keep an objective mind and just try to see um, what people's true motivations are and things. But, you know, the story is a lot of people, you know, one side of the story is that China is trying to um, unfairly and illegally expand what it considers its territories by building um, these artificial islands and claiming places further south in the South China Sea than where, you know, other countries traditionally saw their borders. Um, America will sell our warships directly in those areas. And as they say, this is not China because we are selling. If it was, we selling in China's area. And about a month ago or so, maybe two months now, Britain sailed over its um, the Queen Elizabeth, which is its um, uh, aircraft carrier to the South China Sea with uh, with its um, you know its um, care not caravan but it's a consort of ships I <laughs> try word I'm thinking of it's it's it it has its a, a, a carrier group so it's a group of ships that that uh, travel with it but now Germany is sending its ships over as a way of saying hey we are riding with America um, you know things are back so if, if China had any thoughts that uh, that relationship between NATO was was split. This is kind of a way, and I may be wrong, but hey, you know, of, of for them to say, hey, we are still um, in it, you know, if y'all attack Taiwan, it's going to be some problems, and that's going to be a whole other topic of discussion in some days. Lastly, we'll discuss about... Um, the United States is working on developing their lasers for fighter jets. Now, if you had told me this when I was a little boy, I would say, yeah, I expect to see that one day as a teenager and young adult. I would have thought you was crazy. Now it is reality. Now they're just trying to work out the mechanics of, of the technology working at the speeds and the... Uh, uh, the uh, aerodynamic um, complications that may be at firing laser weaponry at Mach 2. So the Air Force announced um, ahead of putting experimental directed energy weapons onto its fighter jets, they're testing these systems in high speed 
um, wind tunnels equipped in fighter jets with direct energy or, or DE weapons, which use high energy lasers or microwaves to engage threats is a longstanding Air Force ambition but one that has suffered from some well-documented delays. The latest wind tunnel work may help address some of the problems encountered so far. So we're getting close to that day, and I know with the um, next six generation fighters that um, a lot of the weaponry will plan to be directed energy weapons. Um, for those who are not kind of clear on what that is, jet planes such as the F-22 Raptor and the F-35, um, are considered uh, fifth generation fighters. You know, you go back to like your F-16s, F-14s were fourth generation fighters. Um, the next generation fighters, which are already have been designed and one prototype has been flown, according to United States Air Force, the, um, they'll be using that type of weaponry. So this has been a good little start. We're going to see how things go. Know that... Um, we'll be doing this pretty often. I love you. Uh, God loves you, and that's what all that matters. Love yourself as well. <laughs>